What is good everybody, today we are reviewing the WWE Elite Series 111 Ricochet and Finn Balor figures. Now I'm hyped for both of these figures in their own ways. I'm a massive Finn Balor guy, as you guys know. If you didn't know, well now you do. I do love Finn Balor, one of my favorite current talents going. And Ricochet is a very Toyota guy, a guy that I always wanted in Mattel figure form. And he came over to WWE and he's had some great figures. And this may be his last one ever from Mattel, but guess what? It's a damn good one and it's probably his best one, but we won't know until the end of the video. But if you guys want to grab these figures you can do so over ringside collectibles use promo code md toys to save yourselves 10 percent. but we have finn balor we got ricochet we've got some good stuff going on we're going to dive into it of course we do have finn balor over here man not knowing how i'm feeling about this figure overall i already know my gripes before even unboxing it i mean it's essentially a repaint of the elite 107 we'll get into it but you got the handsome fella there handsome fella on the side rest of the figures in the wave over here and this is from SummerSlam 2023 when he took on Seth Rollins. But you have all the bios and the different stuff going on. And then we do have Ricochet. And isn't he from SummerSlam 2023 when he took on Logan Paul? But a great looking gear, a great looking Ricochet. Got the baldness there. Bald, bald, bald. You have another baldness over there. My eyes! And then you even have one on the back there. But he is looking pretty good. I think three figures from this waiver from SummerSlam 2023. But it is your standard elite packaging. Not a big fan of it. You know, we'll see if they change the packaging when we get to San Diego Comic Con. I think they go, what, like 7 to 12 series or something? I can't remember. But anyways, we are going to crack these guys out of the packaging. Put them on the rotating base. Find out what the hell they're all about. But with that being said, let's go ahead and do so and dive into Finn Balor and Ricochet from WWE Elite Series 1. 11. So here's our Elite 111 Finn Balor and Ricochet out of our packaging. I am enjoying both of these figures in their own ways. I do have my gripes, but I mean, coming into these figures, I kind of knew what to expect it out of these. But we're going to get into it, man. Every time I look at the Ricochet figure and the logos on his, kind of like the front of his chest right there, on his, kind of where butterfly joints would be right there on his on his pecs, I'm just going to refer to this as Buffalo Bills Ricochet. Just looks like the Buffalo Bills, man. The entire just gear wrapped up in one just looks like the Bills. So this is Buffalo Bills Ricochet, I guess. But we're going to dive into Ricochet's accessories and Ricochet first, and then we'll run it back and take a closer look at Finn Balor and his accessories and the figure itself. Now, for Ricochet's accessories, you do get the entrance gear and two pairs of interchangeable hands. And this entrance gear is insane. This is damn good. This is the stuff you love to see. Look at that nice collar in there. It's not bendy wire or anything, but it doesn't have to be. It just looks so good. The paneling and everything looks very, very good. You have these logos marks here, which is very nice. You got the Ricochet logo on the back. I feel like you could put this on many people. It doesn't have to be Ricochet. You know, I don't think that that really is that big of a deal right there. But it is kind of that leathery jacket thin material. It is pretty stretchy. You could probably tear it if you wanted to but it does velcro in the front which is very quality and this gear and this jacket reminds me of the buffalo bills i don't know even this logo up here like cutting through it just looks like the bills for some reason i don't know it's just giving me hella bit the color palette and everything just really is giving me those bills vibes i don't think he meant to do that but it's certainly there i'm sure there's some sort of inspiration behind the gear but this is very high quality and one of the best accessories you'll get probably in the entire elite 111 set now outside of that we do get the mic holding hands here and for some reason these look like they're a little tighter like they don't look like they have as big of a gap as usual and for some reason, they feel kind of small. I don't know what's going on there. I think they're just standard, but they certainly look a little different. I don't know. Did they make a new hand mold? I don't think so. I don't know what the hell's going on. But you sure as hell knew it wouldn't be a Ricochet review without the good old Ricochet Kawhi Leonard mold hands, which look fantastic. Ever since they re-sculpted these bad boys, they're still going to always be the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hands because they first this mold actually first came with Ricochet back in Elite Series 69, but it was a bigger, larger version. But then they adjusted it with the Elite 105 Johnny Gargano who also came with the Ricochet Kawhi Leonard hands, and now they are coming with Ricochet Kawhi again, but they'll always be the Kawhi Ricochet hands. Just what they are, man, but they, I'm glad they came with them. All right, man, getting into Ricochet, starting out at the head sculpt, I like this head sculpt. I like this Ricochet. I, again, I think this is the best Ricochet figure that money can buy. I really, I think that's truly what I feel right here, man. He went out with a banger here, but I like the head sculpt. I really like this new necklace they've added here. Don't think we've ever seen that on an elite figure from Mattel ever, so that's pretty nice. I like that. They did a good job there. I always love their torso that they use for Ricochet too. Very lean, very ripped up. I think they could use this for Finn Balor if they wanted to. I like the Finn Balor torso, so don't change it. I, they could though. If they if they were going to change it, this is the only one that I would be okay with them changing it to. But he has all of his tattoos in here, which looks good. You have the forearm shiver here or the longer tape. And then on this side, you do have the shorter tape. I wish it would have went double long on both sides, but that's okay. We get more tattoo details, I guess. But then going down to the tights, you have the white, blue, and red paneling, which looks very clean. 
shape. Very aesthetic. I like it. I like the whole gear here. It's got his Ricochet logos and everything. I don't know the inspiration behind this gear. I'm sure somebody can let me know. Usually I'm pretty good about stuff like that. This one, I don't know. Or maybe it's just a cool gear that he thought up. I'm not entirely sure. But it looks good with the red paneling, the blue, the white. Now, here we get into the Johnny Gargano syndrome that plagues us, and you hate to see it. Now, I think the reason that they do this, I know people say, why do they do this? I think the reason they do this is because of the formula and the height. Like, they want the height to be accurate. But I don't think that this is necessary, and I think there's a way around it. And I just hate this. This I've never seen kick pads that are halfway up the shin like this. It's just not accurate. The traditional boot height kick pads is not a thing, and or if they are a thing, people aren't wearing them. They're not out here wearing them. Every time this is used, it's not real in real life. That is not how it looks in real life, and I can't stand it. But yeah, I, I like the kick pads. They're just too short, and we're going to figure out a way to make our own ricochet lower legs for this. It's going to be an action figure surgery. He is not on pinless joints, so he is buttery smooth. And speaking of buttery smooth, man, this figure is, uh, I mean, he's on ball joints, double jointed knee, all the good stuff you need, man. He's ricochet, and he can ricochet it up. You know what I mean? I do hate that we never got a ricochet on, on uh, butterfly joints, because I think that would have really been nice, but he can do everything you need, man. I mean, he's on ball joints. He can kick forward really well there. You're going to get the thigh swivel, the double jointed knee like we touched on. If you own a ricochet, you know how opposable they are. They're pretty good. They're pretty damn good, and it is a beast, but let's get into some ricochet figure comparisons. And for your ricochet figure comparisons, here's all the different ricochets. The only one I'm missing is the network spotlight ricochet, I believe. Never got that yellow attire. Definitely need to track that down, but we have the Elite 69, which is arguably the best wave of all time. Now, he is too tall. They used to make him way too tall, as you can see with these three, but then they did adjust it with the newest ricochet, which is from Elite 101, and this is the same head sculpt we saw in Elite 101, but he's never really had a bad head sculpt, I don't think. All of them look like ricochet, but this is probably the best gear he's had. I really like the silver or the gray, even though it's not accurate. It was like an iridescent color, but they used to make him way too tall and used to have to lower leg swap him with Sin Cara and stuff to make him the right height. Luckily, we do have the right height now, but this is the Elite 80, I think. Then you have my custom Mac Decal. Mac Decal, what a fantastic customizer. He just, he got out of the game, man. Such a brilliant customizer, but this is my fantasy attire pink and white ricochet with Ultimate Edition Bret Hart boots. And then we have the Elite 101 over here who also had Johnny Gargano Syndrome. So I guess, you know, Ricochet ridded himself of Johnny Gargano Syndrome. He couldn't take it no more. He dipped the hell out, but all of these up next to each other, you can see these three are accurate height. You can see Mac Decals made it to accurate height as well. He was all about accuracy. And then you have the other three here, and I'm pretty sure the network spotlight was this height over here, but we have a great collection of Ricochets. I do hate that he's no longer with WWE, apparently going to be going to AEW, but this is a fantastic Ricochet. I've had a ton of fun posing him around, and again, I think we went out with the best Ricochet they've ever made. I like it better than this. It doesn't have this little belt here. Even though this is a cool gear and everything, this will be much easier to find cool kick pads for, so I like this a lot, man. Great Ricochet figure. And then getting into Elite 111 Finn Balor's accessories, just like Ricochet, he comes with interchangeable hands and then a really good cloth goods part. And this is very similar to his last jacket accessory, but it's even nicer if you don't include the hood. It has a little cuff right here at the end that really just sells the realism. And then they put that little bit of silver cloth underneath right there, sewn underneath to make it look like a zipper. It doesn't Velcro, but the collar and the cuffs are just very nice here. It's the same material as you'll find on those other pieces. Kind of a thicker material, not super thin or anything. You can't see through it, which is nice. But it fits the figure well, and it looks really damn good. And you could put this on virtually anybody. I mean, what, name it. He, you could probably put this jacket on there, which is good to see, but I always will just fight for this, man. I love cloth goods like this. You'll never hear me bish and moan about cloth goods like this. This is hella nice. Love to see it for our Mattel figure collections. And then outside of that, he does come with mic holding hands, and he does have the fingers taped on the ring and pinky fingers, and then he has his tattoo on the left hand. He also comes with his signature shooter hands, which are very nice. I'm so glad that Mattel included these, but when you put them in the figure, they're kind of loose for some reason. I don't know if it's just these hands or the Finn Balor figure, but I find mine to be kind of loose when putting them in, but I do love the pointer or shooter fingers right here. And then he also comes with fists to finally cap him off, and he can beat the hell out of people with these. So getting into Finn Balor at the top of the head sculpt, we have seen this head sculpt multiple times over, and this is actually a really old head sculpt. They used this back on the Elite 70 Finn Balor, which was the Jack the Ripper head sculpt, and we've gotten it on multiple basics since, but this is, I think I did make a custom of this one time where it was the Elite 70 head sculpt, and I repainted it in skin tone to see what it would look like, and it looked very similar to this, and it's not like it's the worst head sculpt of all time. It's just very old, man. It's an old head sculpt. I, I don't mind the fade and the, you know, the pissed offness. I like head sculpts that have these, you know, the pissed off things and everything. We still don't have a faded, tapered beard, nice Finn Balor head sculpt. Still been waiting on that for years. So on his last Elite, we got the Elite 82 reuse. And then a later figure, four series later, we get another damn old head sculpt that's older
older than the original Elite 82 on a previous Elite that was four series earlier. So it's just crazy. But we do have the seven right there from his matchup with Seth Rollins at SummerSlam there, marking the seven year in the making sort of deal there. But he does have his dual black sleeves, got the Finn Balor logos right there, which is nice. No other graphics on there. But this, I mean, this is essentially a repaint with a different head sculpt. I mean, that's what it is, man. You have the jogger mold here, Finn Balor logos that do go into some white, purple, and black paneling. Pinless legs, he does have the towel sculpted in there, which is a nice detail and everything like that, but it is the same small leg mold, and then we have the custom J's, which he does wear in the rain. Now, obviously, they don't have the swooshes, but the John Cena shoe mold's so damn bad, and the formula right here, I hate so much that I don't even want to make it accurate, you know what I mean? Like, I hate this shoe mold, and I hate this formula so much that I don't care to make it. Like, back in the day, I would have painted the shoes and made it accurate and all nice, but I dislike this shoe mold so much, and we've gotten it four times in this wave, or three times in this wave. I'm just over it. But I mean, he 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 can pose around for the most part, man. You're getting a decent little toe kick here. You're going to get the double jointed knee and everything. You get the upper thigh cut. I do despise this because you only get ankle cut. You don't get shin cut there. You know, an AEW Jazzwares figure, you would have got both. But, you know, it's, it's not like the worst figure of all time. And it is Finn Balor, but it's like, damn, this figure could be so much better that it's crazy. It could be so much better. It's just crazy how we're living in this land right now. We do have some Finn Balor figure comparisons, though. So for your similar Finn Balor Elite figure comparison, we do have the Elite 107 with the masthead sculpt over here. I took the Elite 82 off, but this is essentially the same figure right here, man. It's just a repaint. He's missing an arm right here, so I just kept the jacket on it for comparison, but the tights are different. It's the same exact tights. Shoes are different. I would say that, I mean, I guess it depends because you're getting a very similar jacket, no hood or whatever, and I do love the jacket that comes with this figure. I really do, but it's essentially just a repaint. It depends on what gear you like, what head sculpt. You could swap the head sculpt, but this, these tights and shoes are better than these tights and shoes, I will say. This right here is pretty much this figure with a custom shirt and head sculpt on it and you can see the formulas are all the exact same so i mean it's oh man this is kind of what i'm wanting it's still not perfect but you can see the fade hair it's got like the the whoosh in the front there it could just be so much better man it's just so disappointing to look at makes me vomit makes me vomit into the floor but i want to get something else in here and this is what i'm talking about right here man you can see the height here is not that much different this is a former finn balor elite right here finn balor has pretty big thighs man look at the thigh difference right here how small these thighs are and then how big these thighs are if they did if they pretty much took this and just put pants over it and used that as a skull but they've made him tiny here and it all started in elite 98 when for some reason they went from making this the demon finn balor formula which is so good to this finn balor demon formula and they gave him daniel bryan legs and look at that look at the difference right there it this is way more accurate and look how short this demon is just terrible man they made him tiny so essentially it makes him tiny and his legs Legs aren't small, man. So this is the formula they should have kept. I don't know why they ever went away from it. Even the Ultimate Edition has a similar formula to this. So that is a just huge disappointment. Pissed me off greatly. I cannot believe it. Just utterly disgraceful. We need to go back to this Finn Balor formula right here for his elites and give us new joggers. I just feel like this is why I'm so bummed out about this figure because I already know what I'm getting. I know I'm getting this, this terrible small formula that makes him look like a child. And that's what just puts me off about the whole entire thing. But these are essentially the same exact head sculpts as well, just repainted. You can see how crazy it is to go from the demon to non-demon. But let's shut the hell up and get into some Judgment Day figure comparison. So for your Judgment Day figure comparisons, we do have just our base Judgment Day right here. You have Dominic, Damian Priest, Finn Balor, and Rhea Ripley. You have the Elite 109, Dominic, and Damian Priest, Elite 111, Finn, and Elite 110, Rhea Ripley, who just returned last night, which is crazy. She is going to absolutely ravage Dominic Mysterio. It's going to be hilarious. But these all look very nice up next to each other. Of course, the white gear kind of throws it off. I'm sure we're going to get an Ultimate Edition Rhea Ripley. We have an Ultimate Dom and Ultimate Damian Priest coming this year as well. And maybe we'll get a WrestleMania 39. Ultimate Edition Finn Balor coming, or hell, maybe even they'll do an Ultimate Edition Finn Balor in this gear, but maybe they'll update the formula. Maybe they'll give us the right way, and it'll be a nice Ultimate Edition, but I, oh my god, dude, they're just gonna put a new ripped up torso on these legs and call it a day. I'm gonna throw up in the floor. It's gonna be awful. With the John Cena shoe mold, I'll fight everyone and their mom, but I do like to see the Judgment Day up next to each other. We also have JD McCrispy coming in the Elite 112 wave, which should be hitting soon, and then you can throw him in there as well, and we have 
have some later things coming as well, so it should be all good, but that does it for your Finn Balor Elite 111 figure comparisons. And here's a shot of the new Elite 111 Finn Balor with my custom Elite Championship and World Tag Team Championship from Dan Turnquist. Beautiful looking belt right here, man, and this is going to be very nice, you know, as a World Tag Champion. Then when we get JD McDouble from Elite 112, then we can put, you know, the World Tag Team Championship on him, so we'll have our World Tag Team Champions there, but I was doing the thumbnail, and I wanted to make sure that I got a clip of this in there to, you know, have the championships on display, but I like the new iterations of the tag titles. I think they look better than the Spartan titles. Now, they ran their course, man, but I'm glad to have this shot of the title here on Finn, and it looks good. I think it, you know, it looks good on the figure, and we'll do some photography as well. So I think that about wraps up our 2-in-1 WWE Elite 111 Ricochet and Finn Balor figure reviews. Let's start things off with Ricochet. Pretty much perfect, man. Pretty much perfect figure until you get to the Johnny Gargano Syndrome. Everything outside of that is top of the line. The height is accurate. The formula is perfect. Outside of the Johnny Gargano Syndrome, that has to be stated, okay? He does have Johnny Gargano Syndrome, which is unforgivable. I'm just kidding, but seriously, though, I wish that shish would go away. It's been around long enough. But this figure is damn good. Best Ricochet by a mile. I love the entrance vest. I love the the gear that they chose is perfect. The attire looks amazing. The head sculpt's amazing. I love the added necklace detail. It's a damn good figure. I love this Ricochet. Best Ricochet to date. Just awesome. Just simply awesome Ricochet figure. I would highly recommend the Ricochet. If you don't have any other Ricochet, this is the one to grab. If you have the Elite 69, get rid of it and get this one. If you have the Top Picks, get rid of it and get this one. That's just because, and I love those silver gear, and I love every Ricochet to this point, but this one's the top of the line, best of the best, no doubt about it. Now, getting into Finn Balor, we discuss this in the images, man. I hate the formula they use for him, but in, in layman's terms, and just in sense of, if you had the Elite 107, there's probably no reason to get this. I do love the jacket. I think the jacket is amazing. A fantastic jacket. Both of these figures' accessories, it's going to make it really damn hard to rank this set in terms of best accessory, because both of these jackets, or entrance gears, is amazing. Could put it on a slew of different guys, different gears, you know, play around with it, but this Finn Balor, repeat head sculpt. Wish it had a new head sculpt. I like the SummerSlam gear, but the formula they use for him, I just hate. I don't like the small legs. I hate the John Cena shoe mold. I do like the details on the J's. You know, it doesn't include the, the customs, whatever, but there's just so many things that I'd change about the Finn Balor that it just, I don't know, man. It just completely puts me off of the figure. However, if you don't care about the formula and you don't have the Elite 107 and you want a Judgment Day Finn Balor, then this is the one to get, man. I, I could see that. I could totally see that, but It'll be up to you, man. You'll have to make the decision for yourself there. But you guys know where I stand on this Finn Balor. Has great elements to it, but I can just not get behind this formula. I cannot get behind it, but the jacket is nice. I like some different things about it. It is Finn Balor, but it's just not what it could be, and it is very upsetting. But if you guys want to grab these, you can go over to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% over there if you want to grab these figures. But that is my recommendation for both of these guys. But huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Appreciate all you fellas, man. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. As always, man, you guys are absolutely goaded. If you guys want to check me out on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok, follow me at my damn toys straight across all one word. I greatly appreciate it. But I'm getting the hell out, man. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I will catch you guys later.